Gyroscopes have been used for centuries, and actually three of your flight instruments still use gyros today. Your heading indicator, your attitude indicator, and your turn coordinator. These gyroscopes operate on two principles, rigidity in space and precession. Rigidity in space refers to the gyroscope's ability to hold its position. Gyroscopes center on a spinning wheel, which has weight spread evenly along the edges. As it spins faster, it becomes more stable in its track. This is known as rigidity in space, meaning the inertia of the spinning wheel resists tilting or turning. This resistance allows the gyros to hold their position while the instruments and aircraft rotate around it. With precession, when a force is applied to the gyro, the gyro moves perpendicular to the direction of the force and in the direction of the gyro's rotation. Both of these principles require the gyros to spin relatively fast and at a fairly constant speed to reduce errors, so we're going to need a source of power. The most common sources of power for the gyroscopic instruments are usually a vacuum pump or the aircraft's battery. Placing the instruments on different power systems means that if one fails, you don't lose all of your instruments. The vacuum system powers two critical instruments, the attitude indicator and the heading indicator. These instruments are powered by air being pulled through them, hence the term vacuum. The air is pulled through the instruments by a vacuum pump mounted to the engine. The air is first pulled through a central air filter to keep the dirt and debris from clogging the instruments. The air then travels through the instruments themselves, which spin the gyros. Notches around the edges of the gyro catch the air in the same way that water pushes the paddles on a water wheel. Most vacuum-powered instruments work with about four to five inches of mercury. Check your pressure gauge to make sure you have enough vacuum pressure. Know what your instruments require because anything less and your instruments will become unreliable. One of the more fascinating instruments on the vacuum system is the attitude indicator. At the heart of the attitude indicator is a gyro that spins parallel to the horizon. Using the rigidity and space principle, like we talked about earlier, the gyroscope maintains its orientation to the horizon and the instrument pitches and banks around the gyro using gimbals. The heading indicator is slightly different. Its gyroscope spins perpendicular to the horizon. The gyro holds the main drive gear in place using rigidity and space which causes the compass card gear to rotate around it. This translates to a rotation that follows the aircraft's heading. Speaking of turning, let's talk about the turn coordinator. This monitors the rate of roll, the rate of turn, and the quality of the turn. The miniature airplane in the turn coordinator is able to show the rate of roll and the rate of turn because the gyro is canted at 30 degrees. The turn coordinator's canted gyro is attached to the miniature airplane where a spring holds it level until the forces in the turn cause it to bank. Keep in mind that even though the miniature airplane shows the direction of the bank, it does not show the angle of bank. The hash marks in the instrument face indicate a standard rate turn. The miniature airplane's exact angle of bank will change depending on other factors like airspeed. For the quality of the turn, we reference the inclinometer built into the turn coordinator. This is the fancy name for the little floating ball and the little glass tube. If the ball moves inside the turn, it's considered a slipping turn. In a skidding turn, the ball is pushed outside the turn, usually from applying too much rudder, which kicks the tail outside the turn. 